So, you've built an audience, you've mastered your workflow, now it's time to take the next step. I'm here to meet travel content creator, Harrison Brown. He's gonna show us how to build a narrative into our content and also the best practices when it comes to working with your favorite brand. Let's go find out. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be traveling through Glencoe. So we're starting at this little iconic white bothy and moving to those mountains and waterfalls and using a variety of different video settings and also lenses, to figure out how to tell a story to your audience. So sit tight, this is going to be a ride and uh, it's going to be fun. Let's go. We are in probably one of my favorite spots in Glencoe. This is the Three Sisters and it's iconic because, well, I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous. It looks epic. And this is where we're starting the narrative. What story are we trying to tell here? So we're trying to tell the story of traveling to Glencoe, but I think what people need to remember is it doesn't just start in Glencoe. You need to document the whole journey. How do you begin to build that narrative? Have a beginning, middle, and an end. Is that sunrise? and then you arrive at afternoon, and then it ends at dusk. That would be a good thread through the whole film. What can you do in terms of your camera, your kit, to make sure that it's ready? Always plan before, because normally you're starting with an early morning. You want to have everything looked out so you can just grab it and go. So you got your camera in hand, ready to go. Are there anything you do to your camera to make sure you don't miss any shots? A lot of the time, things are happening so fast that if you sit and you edit your settings, you look up and the subject's gone. So having shortcuts on your camera is really, really helpful. Let's talk more about social media now. Um, in terms of sharing your work or just using it to, to build that story, that narrative. How do you do that? So carousels are a great way to do this. So you have the beginning, middle and end, three photos and try and uh, document the day through those three photos. And I think that's a really helpful project to get people to start thinking of that narrative. How do you plan your journey so that it fits perfectly into your narrative? The mistake that people make a lot of the time, and this is kind of where I found my niche actually, is they only document the journey when it begins at the points. People want to see the bad and the good. They want to see you know, the whole experience instead of what social media wants you to post. So I would make sure that you document the whole journey from start to finish. And then in the final edit, you can crop it out if you want to, but at least you've got it. <laughs> right, so you start getting some shots, start telling the story? Absolutely, you need to model for me. All right, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Harrison, it looks like we're spoiled for choice in terms of location. Where are we now? So at the moment we're at Ralston Cairn and it gives mm. this beautiful view down the valley of Glencoe. It's taught me through the story that we're gonna build here. So the story will start from this morning, since when we got up, had our first coffee, and then we hopped in the car and to the three different locations that we'll stop at. And we'll be filming a little bit of each location. What kind of camera do you use on big projects? Travel projects, R5, all the time. It's light, it's portable, and the shooting quality in this thing is insane. What does R5 offer you? In terms of handheld video, is it offers five stops of stabilization in the actual camera, and then three stops in these lenses as well. So it is actually really stable footage. So why is um, image stabilization, why is that so important to you? I think the images are the most meaningful videos that you want to capture go by in a flash. Getting the handheld shots that are stable, that you can actually use, is so beneficial because nobody wants shaky footage. Are there any focus modes that you use to make sure you don't miss any shots? Yeah, absolutely. So Canon actually has probably, in my opinion, the best, I'm not just saying that, the best autofocus in the industry. So for video, what sensors do you use? Normally what I do is I shoot 24 frames and this gives you really nice motion blur. And what you can do is actually seamless transition in the edit because of that motion blur. So it's a really good editing hack um, for afterwards. And also it allows you to crush in that to 120 as well and get those really detailed shots. Great. Um, previously when we talked about photography, you talked about mapping buttons and stuff like that to make it your own. What do you do for video? Anything similar? Exactly the same. So you can customize your own buttons. So for me, I have custom 124K, which gives you that nice crispy slow-mo. And I also have custom uh, 50 frames. So what shot of me do you need to get here? Well, these beautiful mountains in the background look pretty big comparison to you, don't they? So what we want to do is show the scale of how small you are comparison to those mountains with the 7200. So we'll get a nice compression shot of you here. Right, what do you need me? How 
how do you turn your travel content into something that people actually pay for? I think the first thing you need to think of is niching up. Find your niche. For me, it was the outdoors. So a lot of outdoor clothing brands then contacted me after that because I fitted their profile. So for someone who doesn't have brands approaching yet, right? How do you fund your travel? For me, a lot of the time, a couple of years ago, it was that I loved the process of travel so much so that I would fund it myself. The key point here is you need to love what you do enough to pay for it yourself. If I didn't do this job for brands, I'd probably be doing it for free. As a travel content creator like yourself, you must have some brands that you want to work with. How do you approach working with them? Unpaid gigs until I get their attention. That's a little bit of a shortcut. Or what you do is you reach out to the brand. You reach out over Instagram, you reach out over email, you try and get your foot in the door as much as possible, as early as possible, and start building that relationship. And once you figure out these brands and you know what to do, what kind of content do they like? I think it, it comes in a variety. I think a lot of the, the brands that contact me contact me for my niche. So they want to be in the outdoors, they want to be in the wilderness, and I can offer them that setting in a creative way. Is it still important to you know, do your own passion projects? You need to keep the fire burning. Sometimes these brands, they're fantastic to work with, but they're very pernickety about you, how you frame things, how you do things. But if you do your own passion projects that you have control over and it's your own creativity, you can create whatever you want. So now that you've secured a gig with one of your favorite brands, any other advice? I think something that I would definitely, definitely look at when starting to work with brands is contracts. Have a contract to protect yourself, protect the brand, but more importantly, protect your own work and your own content. That is essential. Well, are we going to get some more shots to finish our narrative? Absolutely. You need to model. All right. I'm ready. <laughs>Harrison, thanks for taking me around Glencoe. It's been epic, like great location, the weather, everything. It's been Scott. amazing. And uh, I think we've learned so much today. We've learned about building a narrative when it comes to video and photography and travel content. And we've learned about working with brands. Uh, are there any other final tips and tricks that we can take away? I think when it comes to travel photography and videography, no matter where it is you are, whether it's a city break or it's a beach holiday or it's down to Glencoe for the weekend, there's always a story to be told. I think edit 100 videos, start to finish, take over a thousand photos start to finish, editing process and all, and eventually you'll get that perfect style and that perfect content. And perfect content attracts the perfect brand. So guys, practice makes perfect. So keep practicing, keep shooting. And if you need to, go back in this video and watch it all over again, make some notes and uh, just get out there. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe for more videos in the Canon Learning Series.